This is Physical Science 2, Chapter 20, Part 4 on Earth Materials. In this portion of the video lecture, we will be discussing metamorphic rocks and the rock cycle. The last branch of uh, the rock family are the metamorphic rocks. Um, the word morph in Latin denotes kind of a change in form. Uh, so metamorphic rocks are those rocks that are changed by a combination of heat, pressure, and chemical activity. So what ends up happening is that the uh, new minerals will form either due to intensive heats, pressures, or chemical activity. So it can be one, two, or a combination of all three of those. So any igneous, sedimentary, or another metamorphic rock can change through what we call metamorphism, which is changing by heat, pressure, or chemical activity. So when it ends up happening in this changing or morphing process is that new minerals will form. Um, generally with high temperature and very high pressure, um, minerals will form by a dehydration process. Uh, because the temperature and pressure is so high, those minerals will literally get squeezed and uh, water molecules will come out and that will force the atomic arrangement to be different, which will give us a new mineral. So for example, a lot of the uh, minerals that make up clays, different sort of clays, uh, under uh, dehydration, they will flatten and squeeze uh, and form mica minerals. So where does metamorphism happen? Where does all of this heat pressure or chemical activity come from? Well, it comes from underneath the surface of the earth. Uh, so regional metamorphism is a very large scale change of rock. Uh, regional metamorphism happens generally very deep underground uh, and it can change, for example, a whole mountain range uh, from one rock type to another. Contact metamorphism is uh, what we get with a little bit of hot spot activity or volcanism uh, that we discussed in our last chapter. So contact metamorphism indicates that change won't happen unless the rock is physically touching or in contact with the magma. So contact metamorphism happens on a much smaller scale. When we classify metamorphic rocks, uh, we look at uh, their composition uh, as well as their foliation. Um, foliation is kind of like a lots of layers or bands in a metamorphic rock. Uh, foliation comes from the word folio in Latin, uh, which denotes like a book or a page. And so these layers kind of look like pages uh, pages in a book. An example of a foliated metamorphic rock is uh, the rock that's called gneiss. Uh, the G is silent. Uh, gneiss is what happens when the igneous rock granite undergoes heat, pressure, or chemical activity. If there are no layers or bands, uh, we call those types of metamorphic rocks non-foliated. So these are rocks whose grains are more in kind of random orientations. Uh, an example of a non-foliated type of metamorphic rock is marble. Uh, marble occurs when limestone undergoes heat, pressure, or chemical activity. So we can take a look at our metamorphic rocks based on their texture, whether they're foliated or non-foliated and their composition, so what types of minerals make up these metamorphic rocks. So again, gneiss is formed by granite undergoing heat pressure or chemical activity. Marble is when limestone undergoes heat pressure or chemical activity. A mica schist is what occurs when certain types of sandstones undergo heat, pressure, or chemical activity. Quartzite is another rock uh, from sandstone that undergoes heat, pressure, and chemical activity. 
Uh, and slate is when we get siltstone that undergoes heat, pressure, or chemical activity. So all of these rocks at one point in their existence uh, were another type of rock before metamorphism happened. The minerals that are inside metamorphic rocks also give us a clue uh, about the original rock type before the heat, pressure, or chemical activity acted upon those rocks. So we can take a look at all of these processes that continuously form and change rocks, known as the rock cycle. So the rock cycle involves chemical processes, physical processes, that continuously form and change rocks. So we can take a look here uh, at uh, a rock uh, cycle. Uh, if we take magma or lava and cool it off, we can get an igneous rock, for example, like a granite. Uh, if we have some sedimentary rock of limestone that uh, undergoes heat, pressure, and chemical activity, we can turn uh, those type of rocks into a nice. Uh, we can take sediments and compact and cement them together to form a sedimentary rock. Uh, we can take an igneous rock and put it under heat, pressure, and chemical activity and change it into a metamorphic rock. So the earth is continuously changing and recycling uh, the different types of rocks. This has been Physical Science 2, Chapter 20, Earth Materials, Part 4.